gotta tell you guys, Trevor Noah has been on the road with Martin and I for, like I said, the last four months, and uh, he's, a, he's a great friend and a funny, funny man, and uh, any of the stories you guys might have heard about us in the past and the practical jokes, they've all been true, especially when a new guy shows up. <laughs> You know, Trevor's a cool dude, you guys, but we couldn't wait to have fun with him. So let me tell you a quick story. Uh, we were doing a show in a city called Eagle Pass in the state of Texas. Now, got some Tejanos in the house? What's up? <laughs> you far from home, coño. So anyway, we're doing a show out in Eagle Pass, Texas. Now, I have a friend of mine named Rick Gutierrez, who's also a comic who was on last season, who lives in San Antonio, Texas, which is about an hour or so away from Eagle Pass. He bought a new car and he drove from Eagle Pass, or I'm sorry, from San Antonio to Eagle Pass to meet up with us for a show that night. After the show was over, he says, hey man, he goes, you wanna leave a little bit early and uh, we'll take my car and you can drive it and the guys can catch up with us tomorrow in the tour bus. So I'm like, cool, let's take off. So I tell Martin and Trevor and the rest of the guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow night, I'm leaving with Rick. So we get in Rick's car and I get to drive. We head to San Antonio. About 30 minutes into the drive, we start seeing flashing lights on the side of the freeway. And then a big sign that comes up and it says, Immigration Checkpoint Ahead. Okay? Don't worry, this story ends differently. So anyways, I still get nervous. You know, I'm driving and I pull up to the line. And I'm sitting there and I'm just, I'm just waiting for the officer to say something that's gonna annoy the hell out of me. So I'm just waiting and here comes the officer and when he saw me, he said, oh, Fluffy! <laughs> and when I heard that, in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> He's like, dude, what are you doing here? I said, well, we have a show tomorrow night in San Antonio. We're just passing through. Where's your tour bus? I said, well, my tour bus is back in Eagle Pass with the other guys. He goes, can we take a picture? I go, what about, you know, cars coming? He goes, there hasn't been a car here in hours. So we get out of the car. We take some pictures with the immigration officer and the dog. And <laughs> we get back inside. And he says, thank you so much for taking the picture with me. I really appreciate it, man. We're just bored right now. I go, really? You guys are bored? Yeah, we're bored. I said, well, my tour bus is gonna be passing through here in about two hours. <laughs> and I says, we have a new guy on the bus who's from South Africa, and he's, uh, he's been bragging about his immigration status and how he never has problems with customs or immigration because all of his paperwork is always in order. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> if you're bored. <laughs> Next morning, you guys, I get a text from Trevor, okay? And you see how cool and calm he is. That text sounded mad. I just look at it and it said, you're a dick. <laughs> I couldn't get to Trevor fast enough to hear the story, right? So Martin and I, we pull up to the theater and uh, we see Trevor. And he already told me in the car, hey, dude, Trevor's mad. I'm like, I see Trevor. I'm like, Trevor, you okay? And he just went off. Gabriel, it was insanity, I tell you. It was insanity. They pulled me off the tour bus like I was a common criminal. I wasn't wearing any pants. They took away my passport, my cell phone, all of my money. They stuck me in a jail cell with other criminals. Don't you have anything to say? I said, dude, you said you wanted to be black. <laughs> I love it, you guys. Trust me, you guys make it possible for me to have an incredible life and take care of my family. So I'm all for it. Not a problem. Trust me, right now, it's so crazy because I'm still adjusting to people walking up to me. I'm checking into the hotel and they already knew me, which was crazy. I go like, uh, hi, I'm checking in. Here's your key, sir. What? Um, um, we know it's you, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that's awesome. I needed that like six years ago. One time I was trying to check into a hotel in Chicago at one o'clock in the morning because I missed my flight. Nobody's at the front desk, just a little bell and a sign that said ring for service. So there I am. Ching, 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 All of a sudden I heard this. I hit a bell. All of a sudden, this lady came out, just... <laughs> Are you the one ringing that damn bell? <laughs> what the hell you want? I'm, I'm checking in. You know what time it is? It's tomorrow. <laughs> I know I missed my flight. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say. <laughs> What's going on out there? Girl, you gotta see this. I got a big-ass Mexican showing up in his head. <laughs> okay. What's your name? My name is Gabriel Iglesias. Iglesias. 
Yes. Iglesias. Okay. Iglesias. Okay. E G L. No, 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 no. It's Iglesias with an I. What an I? But you say Iglesias. You didn't say Iglesias. You say Iglesias. It's Iglesias with an I. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say, it's your damn name, okay? Mr. Iglesias with an I. You know that's bad for you. Oh, that's right here. My grandmama lived to be a hundred years old. Smoking? I did her own damn business, okay? <laughs> Mr. Iglesias with an I. Okay, I found you in the system. I got you for two nights, full size bed, non smoking. I requested a queen size bed. And you would have got a queen if you'd have been here yesterday. But it's tomorrow and you're lucky I'm talking to you. <laughs> Mr. Iglesias with an I. What's the I stand for? I need a bigger bed. <laughs> See this, Nacho Libre is tripping. <laughs> but this is great, man. We've just been touring, going all over the place. It feels good to be somewhere for this long. Yeah, you know? usually it's just, we, you know, every day we're going somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah all the time. I mean, it's like Vegas was the last stop, right, for the big fight? Yeah, oh yeah, we were there for that fight. Ay, Dios mío, no, yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you guys something though. For me, the most entertaining thing about that fight was uh, was the interviews, the interviews leading up to the big fight. You know, especially the ones in Spanish, because the interviews in Spanish, those guys get down. You know what I mean? It's intense. The guy comes out. Estamos aquí con ESPN Deportes. Uh, estamos con Canelo. Canelo, please, por favor. ¿Cómo va a estar la pelea contra Mayweather? And then Canelo sounded hardcore and cool and bad. He's like, bueno, mira, eh, le voy a dar con la izquierda y luego le voy a dar con la derecha y va a pegar el piso y se va a morir. And the guy's like, oh my God, that was like such an intense interview. And I wish they would let the guy just do interviews in Spanish. Do not make a guy who does not speak English well do interviews in English. Because in English, he doesn't sound intimidating at all. Hey, we're here with uh, Canelo Alvarez for ESPN Sports. Canelo, can you tell us what's going to happen? What's your strategy against Mayweather? Uh... Well, I, uh, I, I am going to hit him like this, and then I am going to hit him like this, and he going to, ¿cómo se dice que se va a caer? He going, he going to fall, and, and, and tan tan, it's like that. It's, and you are thinking about driving, don't do it. You know, it's not a good idea. Cause like I said, you know when you're drunk, you know when you're drunk, you're doing laps in the parking lot and you can't find the exit, hello? <laughs> Some of you make it out to the streets. You know when you're drunk, you're like, you know. <laughs> Behind you, you hear <laughs> Shut up, stupid. You know, if you hear, if you hear the magical sound, one of two things will pop into your head. Either one, I'm okay, I'm fine. I can beat this. Or two, I'm gonna go to jail. I'm gonna go to jail. I'm gonna go to jail. I gotta let you go, babe. I'm gonna go to jail. Tell the kids I love them, babe. I'm gonna tell you right now, again, if you can make the police laugh, you have a chance. If you do get pulled over for drunk driving, okay? Pull over as slowly and as safely as you can. Get over the end. Now, if you know for a fact that you are gonna go to jail, okay? You're already, I'm gone. Have a little fun. I don't mean take off in a high speed pursuit. No, 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 don't do that. Cause you're not gonna get very far. I mean, if you're drunk and you know you're gonna go to jail, you know, and you have tinted windows, have a little extra fun. Take off your seatbelt, jump over to the passenger side, throw your seatbelt back on and just wait for the cop. You have no idea how bad you're gonna throw his ass off, you guys. He's gonna come over to the driver's side with a flashlight. You're sitting there and (laughs) 
He was here a second ago. I don't know where he went. Excuse me? What? Me drive? Oh, hell no, I'm fucked up. Since uh, you're, you're quite the aficionado here, what can people do to spice up their life? Toys. Hey, come on, you can only go so far with what you got. Hey, Yogi, so when, it, Yogi when he says toys, he doesn't mean like Transformers. He means like, <laughs> it means like bringing stuff to the room. Your relationship looks fairly fresh. It looks like you guys just got together. You're still touching each other, which is really cool. But not everybody's, not, not everybody can handle toys. No, 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 not everybody. everybody not everybody's ready for toys. No, but, no, no, no. But, no, no. but if you are, you know, it doesn't hurt to go to the shop. Like, you took me to the sex shop the other day. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 that didn't sound hey. right. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Look at everybody's all mad now. Like, Fluffy, say it ain't so. <laughs> Tell what? me you're not a sucio like Martin. <laughs> like him let me tell you guys what happened okay i did not take him to a sex shop okay the sex shop just happened to be in the same parking lot as his restaurant we went to go eat at okay here's what happened we went to go eat at this place it was amazing we walk outside and um i'm stuffed martin's stuff and he goes hey look what's next door i go oh yeah big deal dude you know it's this place in dallas texas called condom sense which is an amazing catchy name for a you know a place like that you know what i mean <laughs> And uh, he goes, let's go check it out. I go, dude, uh, I'm, I'm good, bro. And he goes, man, it's freaking hot. And I go, well, let's get in the car. And the car wouldn't start. And we're freaking burning up. So I'm like, I bet you anything there's good AC in that, you know, in that shop. <laughs> let's go over there. And I get closer and I start getting recognized in the window. I'm like, I'm not going in there. Martin goes, come on, go with me. I'm like, oh, great. So we walk inside. And as soon as we walk into this shop, that freaking little sensor at the door, you know, you know in my head, I hear, pervert. <laughs> Yogi, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't need anybody taking pictures of me in this type of place. So I tell Martin, hey, bro, I'm out. I'll be outside. And he goes, come on, bro, go with me. I said, dude, man, nah, this is not cool. <laughs> and then this guy leans over the counter, and he sees Martin and I standing there. And he goes, get in here, you two. Get in here. <laughs> it's a party. Couples only. And I'm like, oh, my God, Martin, he thinks we're gay. I said, I'm going outside, and then Martin yells at me, go with me, and I'm like, great, he's yelling at me. That makes me the bitch. <laughs> now I'm stuck, now I'm stuck with this fool. We walk into this shop, and I'm not about to start walking up to the, you know, the stuff that's in there next to him so that he can look at it and have the guy think, oh, that's what he's gonna use on the big guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hell no, so I'm like, Martin, go do your thing. And I just went to go find some neutral corner to just hang out in. And it, Martin's funny, by the way. Bro, when you're looking at toys, he kills me. He doesn't just look at it and go, yeah, I want that. He actually takes the time to grab something, turn it around, take off his glasses and read what it does, like medication. Over 40, he reads it now. Oh, this one only takes two batteries, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in this other part of the store where they sell these, uh, I don't even want to call them toys. They're more like tools, Yogi. Like straight up like devices, you know? I saw some stuff in this store, you guys, that I'm like, why would anyone physically try to do that to themselves, you know? Like one thing I saw was from the floor about this high. And I'm like, why? Who could handle something like that? It didn't even have batteries. It didn't have a cord for the wall. This sucker had a, a string on the side. One of those, you know? Ladies, we don't have that. We don't have that. We can't go to the house tonight. Babe, you ready? You ready? Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on. You can't get it started. You got to call a friend to come jump you. 